plan a road trip. But before we leave, I'd like you to go out to W3 Schools and read through the tutorial on styling tables. Now, I've been invited back to my alma mater to help them celebrate their homecoming festivities, but also to promote my book, A Teacher's Guide to E-Learning. And so I thought, well, since I want to do this podcast on styling tables, why not create a table for a road trip? And here it is. Now, if you take a look at this table, we've got a nice color theme in honor of Michigan State University. Green and white are the university's colors. And my heading row is that intense green background with white text that's just slightly larger than the text in my rows. Then I get down into my table rows where I'm showing my data, Sioux City, Iowa City, Benton Harbor, and so on. And I'm alternating colors between a white background and a light green background. And then everything is framed in a nice, crisp, dark green border. So I end up with a fairly attractive table. Well, here's how I did it. I used an internal style sheet because I'm not likely to want to copy these settings to other web pages. And the first thing in my style sheet was to declare an ID of destinations. So anything within the ID of destinations will have these styling properties. The font family will be first choice trebuchet. Alternates are Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Width should have a default setting of 100%, and my borders should automatically collapse. Okay, so that's the default settings. Then I come in and I say, within my ID of destinations, I want to specify some stylings for my table data tags and my table heading tags. And those settings would be a font size of 1 EM, a border that's one pixel wide, solid, and green in color, 80 units of green, no units of red or blue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I have this padding entry. Now, the way that we read those four numbers after padding is that we begin with, with the position above our text and move clockwise. So I have three pixels of white space above my text, at least seven pixels of white space to the right, two pixels of white space below, and seven pixels of white space to the left. Then I have another entry for just my table headings within the destinations ID. Now here, I'm setting my font size to 1.1, so I'm increasing the size by 1%, and this setting will override the previous one. I'm saying align my text to the left, pad five pixels to the top, and four to the bottom, and that will override the previous settings. Set my background color to the 80 units of green and my text color to all Fs or white. Now the only thing else I need to do is to set up the alternating rows. 
And so I'm saying within the ID destinations, I want to define a class called Alt for my rows. And within an alternate row, I want my table data to be a text color of zeros, which would be black, and a background color of CC, E6, CC, which is that lighter shade of green. Now, when I get down into the body, I specify that my table has the ID destinations. So everything within my table inherits those properties. And then I set up my table row class equals quote alt end quote on every other row. And that gets me these alternating colors between white and light green, making my table that much easier to read. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. You can do this. Give it a try.